You are an interesting woman. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you want to understand your brain and your behaviors and have a better mood and less anxiety and have a better memory. Even though you're really good at memorizing scripts, your memory overall is not what it could be. It's horrible. So if your brain isn't firing right, your feelings aren't firing right. And that's the biz disconnect in our society that we don't love our brains and we have a lot of anxiety and depression and they connect. And so we can stabilize the function in your brain. The burritos are gonna go down. Both of you have this sleepy brain, especially in the front. I think one of your temporal lobes is firing erratically and that's why the emotional brains up, your cerebellum's really sleepy. So if we activate this, this'll get better. Okay. And then you'll find focus is easier. Decision-making and judgment and impulse control. Yeah, that would be nice. Your goals is to understand your brain, yes. your thought process, your anxiety to limit the fear-based thinking that has hijacked your life. <laughs> Rumination, self-criticism. And you wanna feel more confident. Yeah. So just some of the notes from your history, your anxious as a child, your dad left when you were seven, yes. disrupted the family, and sort of trigger catastrophic thinking. Yeah. Um, but fear and anxiety rule your life. You used to have an eating disorder. Now you're actually pretty regimented with eating. And drugs and alcohol not been your thing. Never. Which is good. Like I don't drink at all and I think I probably have smoked weed twice in my life as a kid to try it. And I, like a teen, not even a kid, you know? Maybe a few other more times, but... Well, don't pick it up now. Oh, more times than that? No, I have no intention to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's never been my thing. Honestly, I've had such bad anxiety since from such a young age. The idea of any substance that would cause me to feel further out of control was always so scary to me. And I think because I also have a catastrophic mentality, I never saw, you know, having a drink as recreational and fun. It became this, like scary thing and but you also had really bad people yeah. around you that had those moments where she's like i never want to end up drunk on the side of the road because yeah. she's seen so many people have bad experiences exactly and that's very true it was never like my earliest introduction to alcohol was so my mom bought this bottle of whiskey my my babysitter drank the whole bottle and was because she was going through her own pain and ended up crawling throughout my house, was crying hysterically, ended up on the front yard. And I remember being like, you know, the six year old kid and I was just terrified. This was like my person who was supposed to keep me safe and everything felt so out of, and it just kind of continued from there. So yeah, it never was my thing. And you've been in therapy a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. And have they ever taught you how to get rid of the bad thoughts you get hooked on? I've had a lot of therapy and Mostly it's just been trying to counter the thought. So it's like if I have a negative thought, then trying to break it down and counter it with a factual statement because oftentimes my thoughts are based in not reality or not like in what's really happening. So that's been the biggest tool I was taught or journaling or, you know, trying to just calm my brain down in some way. So like meditation, things like that. Yeah, we're gonna actually see it's not common in your brain that you need to do. We need to activate it. So we did a study called SPECT and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. Right. It looks at how your brain 
works. Right. And the cerebellum is going to become very important for both of you. Um, it's got half of the brain's neurons. And so it typically is busy. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at your scan, I don't like it. Something happened and I don't know what that it's really sleepy. It's really low in activity. Can be a whole bunch better, but it's like with these repetitive thoughts, it's like your brain can't break them. Mm. And you try, you work on it, you go for therapy. I want you to think of it like hardware and software. If the hardware is not quite right, the software won't run it. Right. Right. So you can go learn how to not believe every stupid thing you think, but then they just pop up again. Mm -hmm. So why I have an anteater here is I call them ants, automatic negative thoughts that just come into your mind and infest you. Yeah. And the anteater just helps clean, mm -hmm. clean it up. But, you know, I saw this and I've seen a whole bunch of them and I'm like, and it looks like a trauma pattern. You can see here in the back. Um, and sometimes it actually happens before you have memory. And so your mama dropped you on your head and then you don't know what Or happened. a babysitter dropped you and... Um, well, okay, so when I was a kid, I and I don't know about hits to the head, but I flipped upside down on off of the swing once. And I remember that was pretty traumatic. Why your brain looks so sleepy. Yeah, it's so scary. And then, and then, well, it's good news. Okay. Because you have what you have. You've been trying to do your life without full access to the neurons in your brain. Mm -hmm. And if I can make them better, well, how cool is that? Yes. Right, you're already doing your life. You're in a great relationship. You do things yeah. that matter. Yeah. So if I made you even ten percent more effective, then maybe I could learn how to edit. Dreams do come <laughs> true. This could get worse over time. Yeah. If we don't intervene, so that's where I want you to feel the hope. Because if you do what I ask you to do your brain can look like this. So we can get it to be a whole bunch better. Yeah. And with that, your mood's better. The thoughts are less. Because if you think of the front part of your brain as the brain's break, it sort of shuts that stuff down, but also helps you focus right. and get stuff done. Yeah. That's a good thing. Emotional trauma can lead to, this is a question, can emotional trauma lead to the lack of blood flow in certain brains to make your brain end up, end up like that? You know, usually emotional trauma growing up activates the brain. And so your limbic system works too hard. Okay. So emotional trauma generally doesn't lead to physical brain damage. It leaves your brain always watching for bad stuff to happen. There, it's like a dual component. It's like you have the physical trauma that you could get from a hit on the head, and then the trauma that we are much more focused on, which is like the long lasting emotional, these narratives combined, it's like just creates mayhem in your head. But then if you have a physical trauma too, that's working against you, it makes it even harder. Makes it harder to deal with it. You, yeah. you don't process it as well. Right. And with emotional trauma often comes physical trauma. So if there's angry and there's weapons, that's generally bad for your head. And, and that chronic fear of not knowing how people are gonna react, yeah. that resets your nervous system to just always watch. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel good. I mean, honestly, it's nice to hear that I'm not crazy in the sense of 
like I just can't figure this stuff out, you know, because I have been so overwhelmed by my thoughts and my feelings and my attempts to help myself and they haven't really got me over that hill. So I feel hopeful that maybe this is the key to connecting a few of the missing pieces that I've struggled with and maybe we'll make life more joyful and there will be more ease and all of those things. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's good news. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's always how you take things, right? You can look at it and you can go, oh no, this is awful. Or you can go, I already knew it was trouble. Right. <laughs> Let's right. make it better. Yeah. Right. And that's the hope. I showed you how much better it could be. Totally. Yeah. Good. See, I don't want you to think about, I don't know what's wrong with me. I want you to go, despite all this, I've done amazing stuff. So there's a whole bunch right with me. Thanks. Yes. It, it's always perspective. Right, it's always how you look at things that despite some of the challenges you've had, you've been wildly successful for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> so I have you two in my head, so. I know, I was saying to Raven, I was like, let's see, maybe he'll fall in love with us and then want to like be our marriage counselor, <laughs> <laughs> like be our couples therapist. I love doing couples. <laughs> I love yeah. doing couples because I feel like I get a more complete picture. Picture.